what are some tips that you'd recommend for getting your first contract and getting that foot in the door in elite sport? There'll never be just one answer. The, the answer is going to be, you're going to have to keep on trying. Uh, and you, you, you've got to, I think you've got to make sure you choose to have a central core of values that you've got that, that everything else revolves around. The bottom line is you've got to be a really good teacher. The whole thing is about creating a learning environment for these, these athletes in front of you to give them the best learning environment through which they can progress to whatever heights they've got to get to. So you've got to be able to be good enough to keep creating the learning environment. This is not just about the reps and the sets and the exercises. It, it goes far more than that. It's, it's watching a young person in front of you uh, accept a challenge that you give them and then uh, having a look at how they adapt to that and then what's your very next decision you've got to make to make that that uh, progression a little bit harder or to make it a little bit easier to present the puzzle in a different way to use different words to slow things down to speed things up to choose a different activity all these things become the toolbox of the of the teacher the toolbox of the coach and so, so my advice is always to have that as the central pillar of everything that you do. And then you can drill each one of those down into the thing, technical, tactical, physical, and behavioral. Those are the four pillars that you'll work on. If you just think you can go and do your two, two weekend courses for $350 and walk out and think you can coach. No, your education starts the minute you walk out. Of, of the with the certificate the minute they give you the certificate now you can say right now i can start at least i understand a bit of the words and the language going on now who do i turn to go and find the best teachers and coaches out there go and work go and put the human element above the certification find mm. a coach that is willing out there i don't care what sport it is you could if you're in football codes you could go to swimming you could go to track and field you could at wherever you go you've got to tennis you could go to netball if you can find the coaches that are have been successful all day every day every decade then they, they're doing something right and you'll notice they've got the human element right it isn't just the reps and the sets and the, and the progression and the, and the intensities and all that stuff. Yeah, they're important. It's the ability to influence that young, that young, medium, old person in front of you to be better. That's where you'll learn and you'll watch them overcome their problems. You'll watch them set the, the learning environment up. You'll watch them change their, their mind halfway through. You'll watch them react to what the athlete does in front of them, not react to what the training program was. That's what I say nowadays. So th that young coach that you're mentioning there that's first going into these, taking their first faltering steps into the sport, write your training programs in pencil. Why? Because in 10 minutes of you starting something that you've prepared for, the athlete's response will make you go in another direction. You mm -hmm. react to the athlete's response. You don't react to what you've written on paper. Uh, and, and the way to do that is to go and get to these old grizzly coaches have kept on doing it all the time and watch them. So I'm going, going back to your career journey during those um, development days, uh, who were some strong influences, mentors, if you like, uh, that helped shape your career? Well, those early days for me were uh, were in track and field athletics. So it was Will Pace, it was Ian Ward. It was, look, I can say all these names and you'll have no idea who they are. <laughs> My first boss when I was a national coach was Frank Dick. He became the director of performance for British athletics through the, the golden years of the 80s. Uh, and, and he was a mentor of mine, and we are still working together nowadays, sort of, sort of 50 years later. Um, so he was a great influence. But, you, you know, the, the greatest influences are, are my fellow coaches as well. Um, it, you, you're going to have to forgive me on this, but if, if you're asking me if I can give any advice to young coaches, let, let me throw some names at you. And if it goes on a little bit too long, I'm sorry, but these are really important people. If I take and I'll go a bit of a list because I don't want to miss anybody. Lachlan Penfold, Scott Dickinson, Suki Hobson, Anthony Georgie, Dean Benton, Andrew Lullum, Chris Caviglio, Chris Caviglio Mark McCain, Glenn Workman, Phil Morland, Michael Davey, Michael Dalgleish, 
Paul Devlin, Jeremy Hickmans, Dan Baker, Johnny Mitchell, Johnny Pryor, Jason Weber, Charlie Higgins. Sorry for the list. They are practicing as we speak. They are working as we speak uh, across the world. They are world leaders. And I knew them when they were 21 years of age and 22 years of age and even younger than that. And I've watched them and I've worked with them and I've been and I'm influenced by them today. These are the best practitioners that this country has ever seen. Do you have a favourite inspirational quote or a life motto that uh, resonates? Uh, well, it's, it's come straight away. Um, you've got to have the will to do what the opposition won't. Like uh, and I, there was another one I, I, I used to, we, we had a t-shirt of this at the Broncos. Uh, let me see if I can get it right. If, if I lead, follow me. If I die, avenge me. If I retreat, kill me. And we had a, we <laughs> yeah. had a t-shirt made up at the Broncos. Uh, yeah, so that, those are the two. Uh, the the yeah. first one, you, you, need, you do need the will to do difficult things. Um, it's a strange comment to make to, to young people or anybody to say, well, if, you, if you're left with a choice and one's an easy choice and one's a hard choice, it's best to take the hard road. Seriously, the easy one, I'm not, I'd ever get you there. So, so take the harder option and you'll need the willpower to do that. And, and the more you can test building your will, because everything is there trying to break you, for you whether, it's the, whether it's the world you live in, it's your relationship, it's the work you do, the whole world is going to be putting things against you. You've got to be able to overcome adversity. You need the willpower to overcome it when it's difficult. So that's, I think there's some, there's some teeth in that, to be honest.